This is independent wrestling. With only a few hundred people at the show, these athletes perform life-threatening stunts. They do it in hopes of making it to the pros, to the WWF, and the WCW. But why? Why take the risk? Enter Dave Rector, or Lartiz, from Paris, Ontario, as he is known in this arena. He's a small man in a big man sport, and he's in the last match of tonight's show. It's my dream to make this as a career, uh, to make wrestling a career. Tonight, Lartis is wrestling bloody Bill Scullion, a fan favorite of this Toronto venue. At the beginning, it, uh, we were training outdoors and behind uh, um, a Dairy Queen. We'd have to go up every Sunday and set up the ring, and he would train us. And that happened for like a good six months before we got a, an actual building. Well, at first, I just, I was just really doing it for fun. I really kind of sucked. It still really hasn't sunk in that I could make this my career. Unlike the high salaries of pro wrestlers, which can be in the millions of dollars, these guys perform for next to nothing. The most I've been paid for one show is 75 bucks. Canadian or American? Canadian. The most I've ever been paid. Sucks. For the, for the risk that I take, sucks. In order to survive, Dave Rector needs a life outside the squared circle. I work in this fine establishment named Energy Fitness. Energyfitness.com. Uh, that's what I do. I work here five days a week, 40 hours a week. I have a girlfriend, I have wrestling, that's pretty much all I have time for that, and I get to sleep sometimes too. Well, he is a finely tuned athlete. He, um, he has a very well-balanced diet. I, I see what he eats. Um, he drinks lots of water, and he smokes a lot less than he used to. Um, and he, he works out regularly. He's a healthy boy, a man, excuse me, on the whole, and, um, you know, he keeps that cardio up, too, so that, that's important. By day, he's a personal trainer. And by night, he goes to almost any length in order to entertain, even if it means killing himself. No person in their right mind would do something like that, like, especially when he stood on the, the turnbuckle. Is that what it is? He stood on that, and he flipped. Like, he dove, actually, in a front somersault outside of the ring onto his opponent. So onto concrete and not knowing what the outcome would be of that and I couldn't really see him because I was kind of up in the balcony so it was uh, that was pretty tense that was pretty tense indeed yeah. he's wild though he's wild his heart's in the right place I don't know if his head is sometimes because he does a lot of really stupid stuff that compromises his body and if he wants a future in the business you should think about well maybe I don't need to do that balcony jump in front of 50 people because it's not really going to mean anything. I get hurt all the, pretty much every match. I mean, I'm always sore after every match, but I mean, it's stuff you got to deal with. you got to do what the fans want to see, right? So I don't know. I don't know how far I would go. I've done, I took, you know, done a lot of stupid stuff as it is. I mean, powerbomb on thumbtacks didn't tickle too much, but my back still hurts because of that. I think I got one in my spine, but that's all right. As far as the, the hardcore with both federations now, doing hardcore type matches, the young guys breaking in, see that the only way that they can make it to the big federations is to learn hardcore, then, then they're going to do these hardcore, high risk kind of injury producing matches that's going to, it's obviously going to cut their careers very, very short. I predict, I say there's going to be a, a death that's going to arise from these guys diving off of these balconies out into the crowds and hitting the concrete floors like they do. I, Something is going to happen. They're, they're, they have, the guys that's doing that, I'm going to tell you guys, if you're listening, you have one foot in the grave right now from just doing that nonsense.
where Ortiz doesn't listen to any warnings of danger. As he finishes another match, his body bruised and abused, he doesn't lose hope. He may have lost tonight's match, but the thrill of performing outweighs any fear. He's waiting for his big break. Well, I mean, a guy my size will never, ever make it as a heavyweight wrestler. So, I mean, I mean, you just, you just got to do, do what you're capable of doing, work with what you have. I'm just trying to work with what I have. 